Welcome to the Model Rail Replacement Podcast, helping you get to your onward journey. A friendly service that helps you get from A to B, or probably nowhere at all. Hello and welcome to the final episode of the Model Rail Replacement Podcast. That's not ever, that's just for this season. I'm James and with me is co-producer and host. Oh, hang on, I've got that the wrong way around. Host and co-producer. No, co-host and producer. I've done it again. That's a proper partridgeism in there. <laughs> so, hat, hat hard on area. No, hat hard. I've done it again. I'm the host and with me is producer and co-host Sam. Hello, Sam. How are you? I'm so sorry. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm good. I'm, I'm very good. How about you? Yeah, I think we've come to the end of the road here, haven't we, really? <laughs> oh, for those at home, when you're listening to this, I've edited out four minutes of me doing my muttly laugh whilst I've been laughing at James trying to introduce the show. And for some reason, we didn't restart it, so we're keeping it in for this final keeping episode. <laughs> I hope you enjoy that. that. <laughs> it's just, just, can't be asked anymore. You can just listen to whatever. <laughs> There's no one listening anyway. <laughs> so screw you. Who are you talking to? People that aren't listening. So. To all of our valued listeners who are still there, I'm very sorry for James. James is having a very tired week. Um, he doesn't mean what he says. We all still love you very, very much. And we, w- we will welcome you back with open arms when season two begins. If James hasn't been admitted by that point. James, how no. are you? <laughs> I've been watching a lot of Star Wars acolyte hate things on YouTube. They seem to be getting a lot of views, a lot of people in. And I realised that we have been doing this wrong. We've been too polite, too nice. If we're just mean, people will keep coming back. I don't know how it works. It just does. I'm under a bit of a pressure bit of pressure this week. I sort of self, self put on pressure. And I, I can say what I'm doing because by the time this comes out, the event will happen. But um uh some colleagues at work are getting married and uh i'm invited to the wedding so i've been doing their wedding present for them and i thought it'd be really nice to get them a nice little gwr signal box and then put the uh, their name mr and mrs uh on the uh, signal box nameplate and then put that on there and that was be my little gift because they met at work and kind of thing and um he's really into gwr and model railways anyway so i thought you know be a good gift However, me being me, I've uh, left it to the last minute. I'd um, tried to find a ready-to-plant GWR box, but couldn't uh, find one. So I'm building a ratio kit. Um, and, yeah, I've kind of left it to the last minute. So I'm sort of under – I'm on the clock to get it done. <laughs> so I think. Um, you can do it. It's got, um, it's got a brick base and a staircase, but that's as far as I've got. Nice. I've, I've seen people – build things in shorter time frames there's absolutely no pressure you've got this you've absolutely got this i hope so but i am a bit of a stickler for detail and i'll get suckered in and go oh i should add this to it and add this to it and i don't have time to do that i don't even think i've got time to put a lever frame in it which i really wanted to do but um we'll just have to see you can give that to Uh, them for an anniversary present that's a good idea Mm, that could work (laughs) (laughs) it's the detailing kit uh how about you what have you been up to uh so i was at chatham show fantastic show so uh so the organizers if if you are listening to this or any of the staff who worked at that show first of all as a solo person operating a stand not only myself but danny from various multiple units who was right next to me we were so looked after as solo people they were fantastic um lyndon and the team from fairford depot especially shout out to matt from the slough model railway club and to colin who is also part of the ferrum model railway club where linden is from a massive massive thank you you guys looked after me to no end you kept me hydrated you got me coffee and um because there were three of them manning the layout there was always someone going to get us food and snacks and stuff like that so a massive thank you to danny on one side of me and then the fairford depot team on the other side you guys absolutely looked after me and i was very happy by the end of the weekend for it so um so yeah um the show was fantastic i mean i had that annoying thing if you've ever been behind the scenes at a show me as a person i do that sort of panic thing of oh the show's opening in 45 minutes i need to be ready now sort of thing so i like get everything ready make sure everything's set up and then i'm like right oh crap it's 45 minutes and i've done that thing where i've got there i'm prepared i'm ready and i 
I didn't actually need to be ready for another 45 minutes. But the one thing I found is that I was trying to go around and look at layouts before the show opened, because very much from when the show opened to when it stopped, I was very, very busy. And all of the layouts still had covers on them, at like five minutes to go. And I was a bit like, I can't look at any of these. So I got <laughs> around I got around to all the stands, um, sort of like the um model rail traders i got some absolutely outstanding bargains uh, across the weekend but the actual layouts i didn't really get to see many of the layouts because <laughs> they still had covers on them five minutes before the show was going to open so i was a little bit like oh so i missed most of them i got to see a few of them but not enough where i had time to stand and watch and really appreciate what was going on um but it was a really really good show other than that i've been well weathering a lot this week um i've just got a massive o gauge uh, weathering commission out the door um that is going back to patrick's lane uh, so bruce the new owner has um he's been keeping keeping me in 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 the filth is that the right term um but yeah that that's made as well i've i have cleared a lot off my desk in the last couple of weeks so i feel i feel quite like accomplished <laughs> that i've sort of just gone right i need to get all this all this gone so i've been doing that a lot of weathering and it's meant that there's a bit of space freed up on my desk where i've done a couple of repaints um including my 455 that i'm doing and uh lots of backman mark ii coaches i'm currently repainting those into nsc um they were all in there was a period where there was Mark II coaches in BR green, and I bought loads of those really cheap over the last couple of years, and I've just resprayed them, ready to put them into network selfies, so that when they're running around on the tracks, they look half decent. So that's that's pretty much been my week. It's been a lot. I've done a lot. What about you? That was a very busy week. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I, I feel like most people do that thing where they go to a show and they come back and they're completely model railwayed out, but I sort of came back and I had like this. Um, this rev revitalized feeling of obviously i've had that funk of not being able to properly run my layout or anything like that mm. so i i sort of thought i was going to come back and just sort of be flat and do it but i've come back and done so much model railway over the last um few days that i'm quite impressed with myself looking back at on how much i've actually done um so so yeah but asking the question again before i talk more about myself what have you been up to yeah no i, I as i say i've been uh trying to do this uh, signal box, but um, that's it, really. Otherwise, we, I went to the Northampton uh, District Model Railway show in Road at the weekend. It's a nice little show. Although this year, there was, I think I can say, I probably still only seen 80 to 90% of the layouts that were there. Um, but that's kind of, I think, one of the problems if you keep going to the same shows in the same area year in, year out, eventually you're just going to sort of get the collection, I suppose. But it was still a nice, pleasant little show. Mm. Um, picked up a few bits for the boys layout because we're going to try and do uh, a minery style engage layout for him mm. um, we're just on the lookout for a pico engage turntable at the moment because um, he has some of the older farish models which don't have couplings on the front so he's going to need a turntable to turn his engines around so they can go back out again but yeah otherwise i'm uh, i'm very pleased because um i thought i'd missed out on the cure scale harry needle railroad class 37 in the tango orange livery mm. so when they announced it i think last year i looked at it and i thought yeah i wouldn't mind that but because of the 6060s i ordered for some reason i decided i won't order it just yet i'll order it next month or whatever and then all the 37s landed uh here on the boat and everyone started getting their 37s, and everyone went 37 crazy. And when I went back on the website, it sold out. And I was kicking myself, because I don't know why I hadn't just pre-ordered, and I'll just pay later. Just pay for it later, because they don't charge you anything. I don't know why I hadn't done that. Um, so I thought I'd missed out. I put on the notify me when in stock. And then the other day, the email came through about half 12, saying they're in stock. And um, their Instagram, I told everyone about an hour before that as well. But uh, unfortunately, I've been a night shift. So I slept right through that and thought I'd missed out on it. And I was like, oh, gutted. Absolutely gutted. Looked on eBay just to see. And there was a few scalpers on there taking uh, a few pretty pennies, shall we say. Mm -hmm. And I'm not prepared to do that. But um, happy days. I'm hoping that it may be because I ranted. It wasn't, it wasn't really a rant, rant, but I did put on Cure Scale. It was very unfair that it announced that these models have been released at half 12 when I was asleep. 
after a night shift. So today the email came out at quarter past four to say there was a handful of models left and uh, I didn't hang around and I dived straight on the website and managed to get myself um, one of their uh, Harry Needle Railroad R37. So I'm very happy about that. So because um, I thought I missed out on that like, model. So, yeah, that's pretty much my modelling for the week. Nice. Have we had any news this week? Uh, well, it is the summer. And as we all know, it's a bit of a long period for uh, modellers and model manufacturers out there, etc. But there is just one little bit of news I'm aware of this week. And it's Rails announcing an exclusive Backman 00 test unit Gemini. Uh, so this is the old Derby lightweight DMU that was taken in by the Rail Tech um, company, a part of BR. And then painted into their very um, striking uh, BR blue and red scheme. And um, yep, so Rails are now got this model all announced, I think today, in fact, uh, £269.95 for the two car unit. I'll be honest, I'm not quite sure when it did run, but um, I'm sure it'd be a popular one, just from the fact that it's quite an unusual prototype. And it's probably one of those ones that gives you an excuse of running something that's otherwise out of normal service was had long since stopped running yeah um, I, th I think a lot of the test center stuff seems to go very well as well because there was quite a big um people really liked the was it the 40c set that came in the research team because it was used as a eurostar tester yes that's one of them yes yeah so i think those are the kind of things where i think if you have well, they're, they're like your hush hush and stuff like that. You have a fan base that really wants them. And I think it will be a case of we'll either see that reduced to £150 in the next 12 months or we'll see it um, at that price for double that price on eBay. I think it could go either way on that one. Yeah, definitely. Um, reading into it, it, it lasted until 1984. So there's an excellent excuse there for uh, people to uh, get that one if they're an 80s modeler. Mm. But otherwise, that's pretty much it for news. Probably move on to our next section of the show, I'd say. Yeah, which is weird because we also, where we had that little fluctuation at the beginning where you had your midlife crisis on on air, we haven't actually said what the special special event for today it actually is. I mean, I'm sure the title is going to give it away, but what, what's what's coming up in the main segment, James? Yeah, so for the illiterate out there that... Um haven't got a clue what we're what the episode is and just stumbled across across our podcast uh today we have a very special guest in tracy and ian from gauge master so we've been talking the last few weeks that we were going to do something a little bit different and this is what it is so it is an interview episode but the interview is going to be slightly different in that we are asking different questions because we don't think our usual standard set of questions will quite fit our guests uh so we talked to tracy and ian about all things gauge master <laughs> Look at that! You see that there? The super shiny diesel loco that's coming this way. Yeah, I see it. Isn't it beautiful? So fresh, so clean, like it's straight out of the box. I mean, yeah, it's nice, but I prefer it to have a used look to it. In an ideal world, that would be nice. But I'm sure the owner doesn't have the confidence, skill or time to undertake such a job. Then why don't they just send it to Emperor's Path? Emperor's Path? Yeah. SBJ has years of experience in model railways and wargaming. The ability to meet your weathering needs and works with you during the whole process to ensure the project is how you want it, not like it's come through a factory. Come on, that must cost a fortune. Not really. He offers different levels of weathering at really affordable prices. I've got my whole fleet weathered by him. My loco has got the full treatment whilst my rolling stock just a dusting with the airbrush and it looks really authentic. I might just get a quote. How do I contact him? You can get him on Instagram at Emperor's underscore path, by Facebook Emperor's Path or Emperor's Path contact at gmail.com. Emperor's Path weathering. If it's not filthy, let's change that. And we are back for our main segment of our last show. And today we've got something very special because we have Ian and Tracy from Gage Master. Uh, hello, Ian. Hello, Tracy. Welcome to the show. How are you? 
Hello. Hi, James. We're good, thanks. So you are obviously Gage Master, and I mean, everyone listening should really know who you are and what you do, but for anyone that's been living under a rock, would you like to tell us a little bit about yourselves and your business? Yeah, so we're Gage Master, um, probably best known for our controllers. Um, we've also got a retail outlet as well. We've been going since 1974. Um, so obviously been a long time in the business. It makes us 50 this year, which we'll come on to talk about. Started off as a model shop in Bognor Regis and a model shop in Worthing. Um, and then the opportunity came to buy a plot of land next to Ford Station which is what we did in 1988 um, and sort of combined that with controller production under one roof. Um, yeah, and we've been going strong ever since. Um, we're also one of uh, the world's biggest model railway wholesalers and distributors as well. So many of the products that you um, buy in your local model shop would have been sought, would have been bought from us um, by other stores. Um, and we represent some of the biggest European brands um, such as Marklin, Fleischmann, Roco, Heiko, Faller, Knock, et cetera, et cetera, um, as the, their official UK distributor. That's very cool, yeah. And uh, I have visited your shop many times because um, I have family in the area, and it's always a very wonderful shop to go into, and I do enjoy how much you've got there to look at and tempt me with. But uh, we'll move on to our first question, which we always like to ask, which is, are you steam, diesel, or electric? Um, I think I'm quite a classic type person, so I'm going for steam. Very nice. And Ian? Uh, well, I was going to throw in a joke about tracing an old boiler then, but I'm going to do that. <laughs> uh, diesel all the way. Uh, Absolutely. It... million percent. <laughs> Not even close. I think that I think that makes diesel the winner for this season with our guests. So I think um, the majority have gone for diesel. And uh, I don't know, maybe it's just our, uh, our audience are just sort of, sort of, the dieselers that like to follow us but um yeah uh both are great answers aren't they really um not not the electric then i mean you get you're next to ford station you get a lot, a lot of that passing by that's um, probably why we don't like them is that we you know all we see it all day are electro stars um so yeah electrics yeah boring for us um case yeah. 73 but yeah diesel all the way always a little bit exotic but exciting and we love the noise I guess one of the things as well is you don't even have the three one threes running outside Ford anymore for a little bit for something a little no, bit different. You've just no, got the Electra stars now. Absolute <laughs> diet of three it's quite same old, same old. <laughs> Although they have rooted a stone train past us now about midday, so we all hang out the window and watch the watch that go past. And That's currently, it. we've got uh, Gatwick Expresses going past, haven't we? For some strange reason. Yeah, they've, they've put some of the red ones um, down here as well. So yeah, at least it's colourful. That's a bit of variety, isn't it? It's nice to yeah, see something. <laughs> so, as you mentioned, you make many, many products that I'm sure most modelers have at least one of your items within their uh, own uh, sort of model railway and that. What is uh, your favourite product that you have uh, produced over the years? Well, and I would say this, it's actually Infinity. It's the one we're introducing in August. Um, reason being, it's the biggest project that we've ever, ever undertaken. Um, Obviously, our range of analog controllers are sort of tried and tested, but broadly speaking, it's the same recipe um, as it was sort of 40 years ago. Um, this is an absolute step change for us. Um, and the fact that we've developed it in-house, the fact we've developed it in the UK with UK design engineers, or our own UK design engineers, and it's going to be made in the UK as well. I'm really, really proud of the team and how we've been able to achieve that. I think it's um i think it's a really really good product that's going to offer analog mod modelers in particular something um very very different okay that's very cool and, and is this the product that you've sort of been promoting when you've been out at the trade shows and that yeah i've been showing it off um at trade fairs um and getting feedback from modelers and from other dealers as to what they like what they didn't like so we've been able to sort of you know um, tweak it obviously being masters of our own destiny in the um obviously the source code is ours and it's developed by us you know, we can be quite agile and change things around. So, yeah, we've been promoting that for a while. Um, and the moment is coming in what, two, three weeks time. Three weeks time. Yeah, where we're actually going to unleash it on the general public. So, yeah, we're really, really proud of, um, of what we've created there. And we, you know, we're pretty confident that everyone out there will enjoy it too when they get their hands on it. Sounds very exciting. Um, and I look forward to seeing the uh, finished product and uh, how the uh, Model Railway public reacts to it. Um, 
Tracy, you are you are the same, or do you have something else that um, you're keen on? Um, probably the I, I would be the same because it is such a new and an innovative, if I can say the word, um, thing. It's super exciting to see how we think it's brilliant. Obviously, because we've been launching it, if we didn't think it was <laughs> fantastic. Um, we, uh, I'm excited to see what the reaction is. Um, out in the in the big wide world yeah definitely i mean yeah because your controllers have been like the mainstay i think of the hobby for such a long time i, I remember as a kid it, it, my, my dad had a load of old hammond and morgan whatever they were h&m controllers that were they were all right but then, then he had uh your four um controller and that was the main one for the layout and that's the one i always remember as a kid playing with and running the train so it's sort of it's always it's always been there, I think. So it's it's good to see the evolution of the controller, but still view guys sort of spearheading the the lead on that. Yeah, you still got that controller, James? Uh, my, I think my dad still has it up in his loft. Um, good stuff. It's guaranteed for life. You'll never need to buy another one. You buy a Gage Master yeah. Analog controller. That's brilliant. Uh, I've got I've got a double one that um. He, uh, his friend's uh, dad passed away, and so he, he he sort of gave him a load of stuff, and he, he passed it on to me. So uh, yeah, yeah it, it's on my layout. It's great, great. They are great controllers. I don't think you could. I don't think you'd go to an exhibition around the country without seeing uh, Gage Master controllers. No, no. Be, whether right it's there. an analog one or a Prodigy, um, in every single ep- exhibition, there's always a few of them around. Definitely. Yeah, and just uh, just goes to show the, the the popularity and the reliability of, of, of the product, doesn't it? So uh, we move on to our next question: which, What is your favourite thing about working for Gage Master? I think I'm throw that over to Tracy because then she'll have to be nice about me. Um, <laughs> that, it's a tricky one when you sit next to your boss. Um, <laughs> from my point of view, I'm quite lucky in that my job is very varied. Um, Although my main job is um, logistics, so I uh, organise stuff to come across the world in and out of us or sent back out across the world. But I have fingers in lots of pies where I do our social media. Um, I can work in the shop. I can work in the warehouse. So I've sort of i got lots of strings to my bow. Um, And also, I think from my point, when I started with Gage Master, oh, seven years ago, I think it was, I knew absolutely nothing about the model railway world. Absolutely nothing at all. Um, So every day is a learning day for me. Um, I've learned so much and continue to learn every day about new things. Um, It makes it super interesting. Yeah, and Tracy's just talked herself into a pay rise there. I think it's uh, much better than that to be. Uh, From my perspective, I feel really privileged to sort of head up this place. Um, And like Tracy alludes to, every day is different. Um, Because we manufacture, because we retail, because we distribute, because we wholesale, um, no two days are ever the same. Um, And because we're still a relatively um, small company, although there are 33 of us here, um, if we think something's a good idea, we can bring it to market pretty quickly or, or we can change priorities, you know, um, you know, on a, in a very, very tight time frame. Um, if another department is struggling, we can put more resource into that one. So, yeah, we all really do muck in. And as I say, you know, I can be flying out to see um, European companies one weekend and then the next week helping out in the warehouse because we're so busy you know it really is a absolutely yeah it really is that sort of company and we're like you know one big dysfunctional family at times but it all <laughs> somehow works yeah that sounds that sounds great I, i'm quite envious of that i do i i've um obviously been stuck in the same location when i go to work i do miss that um in the previous life was paint and decorating you used to get, get to go everywhere and to sort of venture out and do all, all these different jobs um so i can definitely understand that pleasure of, you know, as you say, one one weekend you're in Europe, and then you're in the warehouse, and you're doing something else. Um, Variety is the spice. That's it. Yeah, it sounds sounds enjoyable, and, that, and I think that's what makes the day go faster, and, and and the work seem fun. I suppose definitely. And also, when I travel, I try to travel on public transport. Firstly, for sort of the yeah, green reasons, um, but mainly because driving is actually um, an absolute time sink. And if you're actually on a train, for example. 
the amount of good ideas that we've had whilst traveling on a train because we see something out the window or we look at something and think, you know what no one does that or what if we could do that it's actually quite inspiring So yeah, it have, you know, as part of sort of, the sort of work travel, it's, you know, you could almost put it down as product development as well at times. Yeah. <laughs> Def definitely, I, I totally agree with you with that. It's um, for many, many years I had to drive to work, and, and recently the, the trains were retimed, and I can now take the train to work in the evening. Uh, exactly the same. It gives you so much time to sit there and think about things. And I know I've sat there and um, come up with ideas for the podcast, and have text Sam about it, and that, and, and vice versa. Um, yeah i absolutely agree sitting on that train and just looking out the window it does it really does give you ideas for um in our case uh podcasts and your case products yeah definitely. Um, totally i'm totally on board with that we've kind of touched on this already but um you are in a unique location uh in regards to that you are right next to ford station and i don't know nowadays there's not many model shops that can sort of make that claim that they're right next to a railway what is your favorite locomotive that's uh ever passed through My favourite locomotive that's ever passed through was, it was three weeks after my daughter was born, and I popped her in the car and took her down to my place, or our place here, because a Deltic was going past on a rail tour, which I'm really, really which is really unusual, and Deltics are obviously fabulous machines. So yeah, mm. my, my daughter's first train that she ever saw or heard, she didn't have a choice in the matter, um, was actually a Deltic <laughs> in past on a, on a charter. So yeah. That's definitely the um, most unusual and favourite. Unusual because you, you, you don't see Deltics very often at all, let alone hurtling past Ford Station. And favourite because it was my first significant daddy-daughter moment. So, yeah, that's, that's what I'd say. That's very cool. I like that. Did, did, did the products manage to stay on the shelves with the vibrations of the Deltic going by? <laughs> 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 yeah they, they did you know we're there they're, yeah they're anchored down so yeah but um but yeah you did you certainly felt it it was yeah amazing machines that's cool yeah i'm certainly on board with um i'm not too different uh i took my boy to the swanage uh diesel gala when he was four weeks old so um that's where he got his first taste of um sort of preserved railways and diesels and uh yeah <laughs> <laughs> what ones did i see when you saw 20 and we went behind some 73s <laughs> definitely get them while they are yeah. well my daughter's now an achingly cool 19 year old so she'll be really embarrassed that i'm even discussing this now mm -hmm. um, so yeah but she she probably does not know it was a delta here. very cool uh, and and the same to you trace is there anything um gone by that you've ever sort of uh thought well, that's really cool mine are mine are the steam trains that go past we don't get them often um but it's quite a treat when they do go through um when i first started here they they used to tell me how uh, when something exciting went through everyone would jump up at the window uh and have a look at it going through and i thought i'm never going to be one of them people that do that okay. um but i've got on that thing and i am the one that hangs out the window or hangs across the crossing videoing something exciting that goes through um <laughs> Yeah, she's one of us now. She's been turned to the dark side. <laughs> she's making back. Move to the dark side. Yeah. <laughs> That's exactly what I try and do at my place of work. Is you, you can you can tempt tempt them in and uh, get people to, you know, join us. And uh, but yeah, I, I'm the, I'm the sort of the same. My my ears sort of can tune in and uh, I'll recognise the noise that doesn't sound quite right, either if it's at work or at home. And like, well, that that sounds different, and sort of either diving out and. Yeah, I want to see what that is. So um, I, I'm 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 glad that you've uh, been bitten by the bug. And uh, <laughs> I'm disappointed in myself, if I'm honest. I guess from a social media point of view, Tracy, that's that's handy for you that you've now been bitten by the bug because effectively something fun coming past relates to making your job better or creating more interaction with those who um, yes, are watching absolutely. your Instagram and stuff. Um, absolutely, and. Uh when something exciting is coming through. And um, luckily enough, although he wouldn't admit to it, uh, Ian is a little bit of a geek, so he does know what's oh, very, very. <laughs> <laughs> um, he, he does let me know when something exciting is coming through um, from looking at real trains, real, tra real time trains. Um, so yeah, I actually really enjoy running out and trying to get the right angle or do I stand down the end, end of the platform? Do I hang over the crossing to get this one? Um, there is times where it's there, sort of three of us have gone out and 
one's at uh, each platform and I'm hanging over the barriers, honestly, the people that are parked at the crossing must be going, what are they on? So if you were to suggest one uh, to someone like one product from Gage Master or the Engine Shed, what, what item would it be? I suppose that's quite a big question because it depends what they want. But um, is there anything in particular you, you would, would recommend? Um, I would say that you cannot go wrong with a combi controller because it's it's a stalwart of um, controllers. It's proven um, reliability. Um, well, if it goes wrong, we'll fix it because it's got. It's kind of a gateway controller between train set and model yes. railway. So you'll get your typical train set, usually a Hornby one, maybe a Batman one or a Graham Parish one. Um, and the, the controllers are built at a price to get people into the hobby. And I think at the moment where you decide you're going to take it a little bit more seriously, you usually upgrade the controller and usually it's with a Hornby and we sell yeah. thousands and thousands and thousands every year. So I guess the reason we like them is that usually when you sell a Hornby, it means you've got you know, a new person in the hobby, uh, which is obviously something we're all keen to uh, keen to do is to get more people into it so yeah i think combi represents really that yes that sort of step into model railways from train sets yeah no that, yeah I, I like that sentiment there it does does uh, it's a nice feeling isn't it i suppose that the, that's a, a, another one that's, that's come to join the hobby and play play trains as we say and um yeah you, you definitely can't go wrong upgrading from the basic train set controllers they are really limited um i, I know my lad had his frustrations with the Hornby ones when I built him a layout just because, you know, they, they cut out all the time with their short circuit protection and stuff like that. Um, and he, I, I lent him the, as I say, we have the dual gauge mask control and I lent him that one to put on his layout and he was a lot happier running his trains with that and, and things went a lot better. So I can definitely see why you would recommend that product. Yeah, I mean, Hornby, well, just to make it clear, Hornby do a terrific job in bringing newcomers into the hobby. I mean, they probably sell more starter sets than all the other brands combined. And those <laughs> controllers are literally designed to get people up and running, to experience the, the fun of running a train. Um, and then, you know, people will move sort of up through the gears and through the control systems um, as and when their layout grows. But yeah, um, it's, it's always satisfying to see someone take the plunge and get into model railways proper. Definitely, definitely. And yeah, you're absolutely right. Hobby do do a fantastic job of getting people into the hobby. Um, and so, yeah, and it's, yeah, it's definitely always good to see when someone wants to stay with us. Right. So that that's your, your recommended product. And certainly one I, I think is uh, a grand choice for people to look into. Now, one thing I notice when I come to your shop is that unlike many other model shops uh, in this country, you have uh, a vast collection of continental models as well as British models uh, on your shelves. And there seems to be um, trains and sets from all over the world. Uh, is there a particular favourite that, that you um, stock and sell? Uh, what, a favourite country to travel in other than the UK? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, freedom. I love I loved travelling in Germany, I have to say. I love the country, um, apart from during penalty shootouts. Um yeah, it's, it's just a diversity of things that you see. The freight is incredible. Um, I work a lot in Germany, and if you stop up at somewhere like Würzburg, you know, every 10 minutes there will be a freight train going through, and it will. they are long, they are different, it's mixed loads. There can be cars, there can be iron ore, there can be steel, there can be literally anything. Um, and it's absolutely fascinating to watch, particularly if you're fed on a diet of, Euro, of um, Electrostars like we are here. Um, and that's just the freight stuff. And then you add to them the IC units um, and all the regional trains as well. It's just a fascinating place. to. If you just like watching trains go by, Germany is a really, really good place to do it. Um, having said that, I've also travelled in, like uh, last month I was in Denmark seeing Hellion. Um, got to travel on the Danish network again. That was fun and done the same in Italy, done the same in Spain, done the same in France. So, yeah, I, you, 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 know, you do love them all. Switzerland, obviously, but... Yeah, for me, Germany's Germany's my favourite um, railway country other than the UK. Yeah, that's very cool. Yeah, as we we just released an episode a couple of weeks ago where we talked about continental modelling, and uh, I thought G Germany's on my tick to do list. It's uh, I know I want to go see Miniature Wonderland, and I do want to see the train set because watching them on YouTube videos, I don't think it's quite 
as good as probably standing by the track side and watch them go by. Um, and I take it, you know, if someone wanted to model that, you have all those sort of products available where they, they can get started in a hobby that isn't British? Absolutely. Um, probably after British, German or Swiss railways are the next most popular ones to model. Um, we think people go over there and they enjoy it and they want to replicate that at home. Um, and there's a surprisingly large number of people that, either run quite eclectic railways or um, will model the railways of Germany, Switzerland, um, and even in America, obviously. And even Japanese railways have got a bit of a following as well, but in Engage. So it's, yeah, it's um, we can cater for absolutely anything. Almost anything you see on a railway anywhere in the world, we sell a small version of it. That doesn't help me because I see a train and go, oh, I'd like to model that. So um, I do find it difficult in your shop sometimes to resist. <laughs> That's the aim. <laughs> exactly if you don't want me walking out and not buying anything i suppose <laughs> so i'll move on to the next question then and ask you um i know you're talking about your brand new controller that's coming out I suppose the next question is you know if you're going to make an item in the future what would that dream item be we've got loads of ideas things that we want there is one that's quite close to my heart and um, i can't tell you what it is because it's commercially sensitive Ooh, I know, I know. I know that's a really horrible politician thing to say, but um, yes, we, yeah, it's. I think if we make it public, then um, yeah, it, we we might get gazumped by somebody. Someone might steal our idea. Yeah, that's fair enough. That's I, fair. I, I, yeah, sorry to be invasive. Yeah. that's all right the important thing is that you know there's there's ideas in the pipeline. You you still got lots of things planned for us and. Um, and that, and that's, I think mean, that's the most exciting news of it all is that, you know, when you see all these articles on the news that the hobby's dead because there's no Wally show or, you know, patterns of clothes or some silliness like that, and everyone's you know saying it's a dead hobby, and then there's a business like yourself that's going, no, I've got this in the pipeline, I've got this idea, I want to do this. It's, I think it's really positive for us as the modeler to know that there is still a future to this hobby, and you know. We're not not to worry, it will still be around. Definitely. I mean, I think just to go slightly off topic and onto that case, I think it was quite unfortunate that the Hattons and the Warley news came at almost the same time. And that did sort of set all the 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 you know the doom the doom makers and the naysayers that look the hobby's dead, blah, blah, blah. But if we look back over the history of model railways, you know, these sort of events where a big retailer will close have happened at, you know, at particular junctures. I mean, I remember Rail Mail, um, who were a very significant mail order supplier, I think they were based in Watford and Glasgow. Um, in the 80s, they 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 stopped trading. Obviously, the demise of BTs, um, the demise of Model Zone, W and H to a degree. Um, and all these things go in cycles, you know, despite those big sort of setbacks at that moment in time, you know, we're all still here. Um, and, you know, there is just every so often a little bit of a market correction. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I believe the hobby is still in, in very robust shape. Um, plenty of new people coming into it, plenty of innovation, plenty of ideas, plenty of things to drive it forward. Plenty of good people in the hobby um, steering the ship um, across lots of companies. And, you know, we are, you know, we all talk to each other. It's, you know, at risk of being sexist. It's a very gentlemanly trade in a sense that it's not particularly cutthroat. Obviously, we all want to succeed. We want to be the best. But, you know, we all get on with each other and we all want the, the hobby to be healthy moving forward. So, yeah, I, I think that, I think that, you know, we're in a good place. And from a uh, an encouraging new people type of uh, scenario, we've certainly been doing what we can with junior clubs um, that are local to us, trying to encourage, uh, you know, the kids to get back in because that's what we need. It's like we were just talking about succession planning. That's kind of what we're doing for the hobby is that we, we've got to do some succession planning to bring the next generation of hobbyists um, through. So we've been supporting uh, local groups like Bognor Regis Model Railway Club. We've given their junior group um, some bits to 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 model uh a couple of schools locally have started up, uh, you know, extracurricular model railway groups. So we try to support them because at the end of the day, we're not. If the next generation don't come through, we're not going to be here. So it's in everybody's interests that uh, we look after the younger ones and try and br give them the interest and bring them through. Yeah, yeah. No, because I was going to ask that because I, I notice at model shows there is definitely 
uh, an increase in um, younger people coming to the shows and, and sort of looking at the layouts and that. And I was going to ask you, you know, had you noticed that in the shop? Is there any sort of change there? Um, and, and did you think that the, the younger generations are starting to become interested in this hobby again? Yeah, I think so. Um, certainly, in a strange way, I think COVID's been responsible for that, in that we had a lot of people that were unable to go out. In fact, everyone was unable to go out, and that enabled families to do things together. And quite often that would be parents... Um, and their children doing practical things, um, whether it be model railways in our case, but you know, you'd see it in other areas like baking, um, general craft, jigsaw puzzles, all that sort of model thing. Making. Model making. And that has the sort of the rebound from that has been mm. that younger people have been more interested in it. And if you look at it a little bit deeper, because we do a lot of deep analysis into sort of general trends as well here. Um, traditionally, we compete for time with uh, video games. Um, and there was a massive acceleration in how um, it went from 8-bit to 16-bit. And then suddenly everything became amazing. Wii was, you know, a big step change. And then you've obviously got PS4, stuff like that. And the games got so realistic, it was almost like being there, obviously, with VR. But in a way, now they've kind of peaked. They're not, they can't get any more real than virtual reality. And kids are maybe stepping back for that and going for more tactile, hands-on um if you like real world hobbies again so yeah it's it's it's, it's a really interesting time to be in the sector yeah no i, I think from, from my own experience my children um i can't really speak for the eldest she's she's a video gamer through and through but my youngest will definitely put down the nintendo and come and do some modeling um he, he'd rather do that than yeah spend his time staring at a screen so yeah, I mean, what's really lovely for me is like if i'm at um, a dinner party and people ask what i do um you know everyone's interested in it a bit it's not like I go, oh, I'm, I work in insurance. And like, oh, okay. Um, you explain what you do, and everyone, everyone will say, my dad did that, my granddad did that, my my mum did that, and they remember something, whether it be model railways or scale electric or building airfix Spitfires. So everyone's kind of got it in them, and it's down to us to sort of you know draw that out and you know turn an interest into a hobby. Yeah, definitely. And it's, I mean, I, I, I I've always loved this hobby um it's i've always enjoyed it I, i'm quite happy um you know spending my time working on something creating something that you can then produce and, and you sit there and can be proud of and you don't have to be the best in the world as long as you enjoy it but you know and the advantage of social media nowadays is that we don't have to sit in our lofts or our garages and our sheds all tucked away working on and, and what, i mean some people are like artistic masterpieces and what they can produce and nowadays we can share it and i think that's one of the sort of growing advantages of the hobby nowadays is that we can all share our ideas and our love for the hobby and you know our hard work and uh it'd be appreciated and i think it's uh the, the hobby is so personal um uh, what i was to create on my layout would be completely different potentially to what ian would create or what you would create but you're just creating it for yourself so it doesn't matter if that shed that you've put on there is a little bit wonky because it's my layout and if it gives me pleasure then that's what the key thing is isn't it that it makes me cross sometimes when you read on social media when people get critical of of um other people's endeavors because at the end of the day it doesn't matter if um that class 73 has been sprayed pink with yellow spots if the person who owns that is happy and wants that on their layout then fair play that's up to them it's their layout Exactly, yeah. my, my layout, my rules. Yes. That's, that's rule number one, right? Absolutely, isn't it? And, and it, it's all about perfecting your craft. And we've all got, I think, one advantage of this hobby is it helps develop skills and it's many various different skills. It's woodwork, yes. it's electronics, it's, you know, all that scenery making. I, I, I think I could say, and without insulting him, that my, my dad's scenery is not the best in the world, but his electronics and woodwork is far superior to mine. Um, yeah. I'm pretty yes. sure if we lived a bit closer, we could build a layout together. We could probably come up with a perfect product. Um, and I suppose that's the advantage of the Model Rail Club, isn't it, where people can get together and can put their skills together. But as you say, it's it's someone's layout. It's their hard work. And, it, it, you know, they put their is, heart and soul into it, and that's what should yeah. be respected. Yeah, and this is echoing what we, me and Sam said in one of our very early episodes at the beginning of the season, which is when we were talking about, you know, just be nice, you know, and support each other. 
and yes. you know this, this hobby will grow cool so we completely went off a completely different direction from that question we, did, but, we, uh, we, we digressed there we're very good at digressing that's we it the point <laughs> <of it. laughs> um so we obviously asked you to give away all your secrets and and you wouldn't do that so um that's mine and sam's business plan kind of ruined for the moment um, plan, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> one of the questions i suppose there, there, there can be many unusual things uh in in sort of i'm thinking model railways but obviously you sell more than model railways you, you've got like airfix kits and scale electrics etc um what is the most unusual products that uh, you've sold um, well, we're probably about to launch the most unusual product that we've ever sold. Um, because it's our 50th anniversary, we have um, designed a wagon, which in itself is not very unusual, um, a celebratory um, wagon. But we are going to be launching a wagon pack. So it will have a wagon and a bag of coffee, the Gage Master Blend coffee. Gage um, Master Golden Blend. Gage Master Golden Blend. Um, we've got a local uh, coffee roaster to um, create us a coffee because who doesn't love like standing back and looking at their layout with, with a coffee in their hand? I, I know Sam is definitely in that camp <laughs> there. So, <laughs> he's ordered so, yeah. 12 bags already. <laughs> so we've created um, Gage Master Golden Blend, which will be with a um, a wagon as a pack. And... Um, you can either get ground coffee, so it's ready to go into your whatever it is that you use to brew your coffee, cafetiere or aeropress or whatever, um, and also beans. That's, that's really cool. Yeah, that is definitely a very unusual model of our product. I wasn't expecting you to say that. <laughs> but, um, but, yeah. That, Don't pigeonhole us, James. Don't pigeonhole us. <laughs> so but that i like it that's uh that's something me and me and my wife can enjoy because she really likes her coffee and uh, i like model railways so um everyone's winner, a winner, winner. winner. <laughs> i was genuinely expecting you to turn around and say one of the knock models because there's some very risque models that knock produce and i remember there seeing are, there are but we understand this is a pg podcast so <laughs> yeah. we chose not to go down that route that's fine i, I hug in James, we're not going down this route. We're going to stop it there. <laughs> this is a family podcast. But yeah, yeah, no, I was, I was the same as Sam. I was, I was expecting something along the lines of the uh, the knock range of um, certain figures. But um, yeah, yeah. yeah, just type N for knock one five nine five into our website, and uh, yeah, and you can see, see them, see them for yourself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there are people, but don't do I'm it. I'm a bit work. worried that he remembers that number off the top of his head. To be honest. <laughs> Well, what I get to what I get to in my office when the door shut up is yeah, really my business. I look forward to that then. I look forward to seeing the the van and the coffee. So that that'd be very very cool um, for people to keep an eye out for there. I'll move on to our next question and ask you. Um, I suppose it's kind of a legacy sort of question, but if there was one product um, out of everything you've produced, what what is the one product that you would like Gage Master to be remembered for? I can't really answer that. I I. That, can I be a real pain and not actually give you an answer in terms of it being a product? I'd like us actually to be remembered for our service um, in a sense that something that we really, really value here is customer service. And it's part of our commitment to our animal controllers is that if they conk out for you know non-customer reasons, um, we'll repair them free of charge. So I think that if in terms of being remembered for something, it would be for all those controllers that we resurrected and brought back to life to enable people to continue to use their model railways, you know, almost forever and a day. So, yeah, I think our customer service is probably what I'm most proud of rather than a product itself. That's a good answer. That's a very good answer. You're welcome. We do, we do strive on customer service, and I don't think um, anybody um, compares to the service that we offer with the controllers. We've had controllers come back to us that are like 30 years old and uh, the guys down in the workshop have, have got their widgets out of the little box stored at the back of the cupboard and the solder iron and um, a week later off it goes back to the customer fixed and, and raring to go again. For free. For free, yeah. That's brilliant. That really is fantastic customer service that's um what what I um, mean yeah like you say an item that's 30 years old and you, you still yep we'll fix it. Not, as long no, as we can still as long as we can still get hold of the part to fix it um which i would say probably 99 percent of parts we can still get hold of um we'll fix it and send it back yeah. free of charge that, that's the analog range digital is slightly different because that the technology in, in the digital equipment evolves so quickly that you know we can't you know we've only got a finite 
amount of um, parts to that we can eat and then yeah they change the they change the bill of materials and everything changes within the the, the controllers and we can't get them so yeah we we that's analog controllers only that's what uh, but still it's, uh, it's something to definitely be proud of and i can see yeah. why that is your your answer um and yeah certainly customer service i think is one of the most key things and it's one that i think we've all heard those horror stories of people saying that they've been to a certain model shop and the person inside was very rude or that they weren't very pleasant um so when you've got a shop that you can safely and happily say, do you know what? I would recommend them. They are an excellent service. They've done this for me. They've done that for me. Um, you can't beat it really, can you? Because that means that they're coming back and potentially other people are coming to you as well. Yeah, it was one of my main priorities um, here when I came in was that I remember seeing the film High Fidelity and you had these sort of record shop owners that were laughing at the person that came in and asked for a Lionel Richie record. So I wanted to sort of, stamp out any snobbery that exists if you had a newcomer or a beginner in and the the thing that really did it for me was when um i drove driven in in the morning and i saw you know a family arrive and and mum and the kids stayed in the car while dad went into the shop and i thought you know we've got to change this we want all of them to come in and see and experience things and not feel that it wasn't an environment that that they could enjoy as well yeah Yeah, which is why you know we we invested such a lot in fittings and fixtures and making a clean friendly environment with lots of things to try out and do because we we want it to be for everybody unfortunately now um you know when i see people walking up and down the pathway to the shop you know generally it's the whole family and you see very few people sort of you know hiding out in the car you know waiting for their partner or their friend or their their colleague to return yeah, because I, I think I think it's it's been a couple of years since I've been been to your shop because uh, I haven't um, been that way in a while. But I mean, I think, remember the last time I went in there. You know, you've got the there was model railway right at the entrance to, for people to see as soon as they walk in. Then you've got your demonstration yeah. layout in the middle of the shop. I mean, you may have changed it around since last time I went there. And then you have like the is it the marketing my world? I think was out. Yes. Yeah, and, the my world uh, table. Yeah, and my, my daughter's straight over there to play with that. And she's not really into trains, but yeah, she was very happy just to be over there and just playing around with it. Um, the My World, the My World range is a, is a phenomenal range for the littler ones. Um, you know, if, if you've got sort of like I don't know, three to five year olds or whatever, something kind of that end of the age scale, they're a phenomenally uh, reliable and fantastic. They can be lobbed across the room in a fit of temper, and they'll bounce um they're a great range to start people out on the little yeah, a, start the little ones out on it's a really good christmas or birthday yeah person. we had a uh, i had a meeting with um mark mm-hmm. Bloom, uh two or three weeks ago now and we were looking at whether there was the possibility of a uh a british my world set so you know we're in discussions there as well hopefully we can uh get us over the line. Released the yeah i've just released the secret <laughs> and, yeah <laughs> That's that's really cool. I, I like that. Yeah, because I thought, I mean, as I say, she sat there and had a look at it and, and you looked at the range of products and it was, uh, it reminded me of when I was a kid of the Tomy uh, range of products they used to have, like hundreds of them, you know, like you could load the wagons and stop at the different stations and all that. And that's it, kind yeah. of that ideal train set world, isn't it? All on one accessible table. Um, but yeah, a British one, that, that looks, uh, sounds very interesting and I look forward to seeing uh, what you come up with. No pressure there, Ian. No just pressure. Put, yeah. put yourself in the picture, <laughs> my friend. Oh, well, if it doesn't come off, at least I get to travel on my favourite German train over there. We're coming to the end of the interview. It's been absolutely delightful talking to you both. Um, and I suppose this question is we've kept it to last because I think it's an important question for those that are out there and we know at sort of the Model Rail Replacement Podcast that our majority of audience are already into railways, but we're hoping that we're attracting a few other people into it and that. So if there was anyone out there listening right now um, and they wanted to start in the hobby, what products from your store would you recommend um, they start out with? Um, I think the correct answer is anything they like. Um, As we said before, um, my layout, my rules, you know, whatever it is that gets you into this hobby, it really doesn't matter because the longest journey starts with the smallest step. So whatever that product is that that starts you off, it's not for us to tell anybody what that product should be. You know, you come in here, you make your choice. And, and it could be that product. someone wants a particular loco that they like. So we will help them 
with what they will need to do to buy to run that loco or alternatively it could be that someone has come in and seen a load of scenics and we can help them sort of build a little bit of a diet to start them off with the building of a diorama lots of people's interests are so different from some people obviously like the trains and running trains whereas some people uh the scenics and uh telling the telling the story in a picture with their diorama so it's yeah it would it would be hard to say because it depends what spurred you to walk in the shop to buy your first thing and what that first thing is yeah, one yeah. of our first questions when people walk into the store when they say that i'm thinking about you know building world railway is how do you want you know what do you want from it it's never for us about oh well then you must have the most expensive digital system and you must model british and you must do this mm. it's really about establishing what their motivation is what their loves are and sort of crafting it around that and as, as you say there are people who really enjoy the topography of it and the scenic side of things there are other people that enjoy prototypical operation there are other people that just want to see trains going round and round and round and then we recommend products that that fit in with um, what it is they want to achieve rather than whatever happens to be the most fashionable thing or or you know the the thing that you know convention dictates is what they people should want it's as i say you're allowed your rules whatever you like and whatever you want to do but if they come to you they can more than likely find it in your store absolutely absolutely <laughs> Twenty thousand different products <laughs> we, we only know that because we counted them all on the 30th of june <laughs> <laughs> i think people don't realize um how big we are in respect of when you walk into the shop and you see the shop i know Sam came and um, visited us uh, the other Friday and um, I sort of brought him up to the office we were going into the little office to have a coffee and a, a chit chat. Um, and when you went into the warehouse, you were like, blimey, I didn't realise you had that sort of amount of stuff here, wouldn't you? Yeah, the the space that you guys have behind the scenes is is insane. Like, Because it's weird, as you put, because I, I arrive by train and you pull up in the station and you see the back of it where it says the engine shared gauge master and then you've got that sort of distance between the front and the back but even walking into the shop the shop feels big but not overwhelming i i was blown away when when we went out back it was i mean i i said in a previous episode i couldn't believe how much space you had solely for continental modeling let alone for all of the other things as well and i think that's what shocked me the most and i think i i i've said to tracy separately like if you did like a little video tour of the the background and stuff like that i think people would lose their minds as to how big the place would be um but yeah it's huge so big <laughs> When we do this um, social, social media meetup on the 11th of August, um, I don't know how many, you know, five people could turn up, 5,000 people could turn up, I don't know. But um, I'm happy to take people off in small groups to have a little wander, wander around, you know, uh, take them back, do a backstage tour, so to speak, in inverted commas, and come upstairs and you can see the depth of, of what we've got and how we operate. I mean, that would be quite an unusual opportunity. Because, yes. Um, I've got kind of a strange Willy Wonka view to things in that I quite like the idea of not letting daylight into magic in a sense that um, I really, you know, people come to us because we sell them sunshine, we sell them their hobby, they choose to come here, they don't um, they don't have to come here. Um, and I think sometimes um, seeing behind the scenes sort of um, um, debunks that kind of, it's kind of, yeah, it's kind of like the Disney effect, isn't it? Mm. Where it's... Um, yeah, you, 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 it kind of diminishes the fact that, you know, unfortunately, you know, things do just come out of brown cardboard boxes rather than the beautifully presented in cabinets. And, you know, the act of, you know, picking things and putting them in a box and sticking them in a van is actually quite dull. Um, so, so yeah, it's um, yeah, it's a really good opportunity to have a look, have a look around backstage because, yeah, we don't do it very often. That'd be very cool. So, as you mentioned at the start, um, it's your 50th birthday this year and... Yes. Um, as well as the 11th, you have a few other um, events going on through the month of August. Um, for those listening, would you like to just tell us what you've got planned? We've got uh, something going on, uh, a major event going on every Saturday throughout August. So on the 1st of August, we have the um, launch of the Infinity and the launch of the 50th anniversary month um, where, where we're going to show off the Infinity and it will be the first time that anybody can actually buy it. 
Um, it will be nowhere else on that 1st of August. It will not be supplied to anyone else. You can only buy it from us for, I don't, we're doing it for a time scale, I don't know, no, for, no, for a little just short. Just for the weekend. <laughs> just for the weekend. Yeah, so anniversary of August is um, really significant for us. So what we do is we're hiring a marquee, we're putting it up on the front lawn, and then we're going to run events in that marquee um, all the way through the month. And as Tracy says, it debuts on the 3rd of August, which is a Saturday. Um, where we officially launch uh, the two Infinity systems, that's Infinity Analog and Infinity uh, Digital. Um, it will only be able to be bought from us on that day because we'll be shipping them to the trade on the Monday and they'll start getting those Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, et cetera, et cetera. So that's the first, um, if you like, weekend event. And the next weekend is Train Trade on Saturday the 10th of August, where we are inviting uh, some of our friends that specialise in pre-owned secondhand some of the more uh, things that we don't tend to touch as an organisation. We have, um, I'm, this, that one's my little baby that I'm organising. I know more about that one. We've got um, 10 different uh, stall holders, uh, so to speak. We've got some uh, traders. We have some uh, eBay traders. We have uh, a gentleman that has a huge marketing collection and wants to slim it down. So just an ordinary um, customer that just wants to slim his stuff down we've got someone that's specializing in uh die cast buses and uh magazines so all of it will be pre-owned so that is the day to come get yourself a bargain so it's like a little gauge master swap then yes as well. so that's cool and then on the and we'll have a store as well with some of our stuff store. and our shop will be open yeah. as well. and you might be able to buy some coffee <laughs> um and then saturday the 17th it's not rowers but we've got the the gm motor show um which is a scale electric event or slot car racing, as it should be called. So you can come and uh, pick your wits having um, a race on some of our tracks that we've got up there and buy some starter sets at bargain prices. And then on Saturday the 24th, we've got the Ford Festival of Railways. So our own model railway exhibition, again, in that tent on the front. It's all free to enter. Um, so you get the opportunity to see a load, a load of layouts um, and sort of draw some inspiration from that. And then during the week, um, we're using the space to do what we call Knowledge Base Live, um, which is where we did, we run a series of workshops um, with our own in-house experts. So there'll be some scenic modelling uh, seminars, some digital railway control seminars, as well as inviting selected manufacturers down as well for, for specific days. We've def we've got Hellion coming down on Wednesday the fourteenth, and on that day, the lovely Sam will be coming um, and is going to do weathering demonstrations, aren't you, Sam? Yeah, so we've got, we've got Sam doing his weathering, uh, and we're also going to open up because we are the UK's agents for Hellion. Um, and therefore we look after all their spare parts and we will have them all out for everyone to have in a rummage and make us an offer for any of the old bits that they need to either scratch build something with or modify their existing alien fleet and our in-house sales uh, held in spares expert will be on hand to help you decipher what's on all those thousands of sprues that we've got so yeah a really really good program of events for august and we're looking forward to seeing as many people as possible and all the events are free and as I said, on the 11th of August, we're having a social media meetup, which um, uh, basically we've got the marquee out there for the whole month. And it, on the Sunday, it was kind of sitting there doing nothing. Lots of us um, chat to our online friends. Um, so we thought it would be a great opportunity to sort of um, provide a space, um, a dedicated space where people can come along and meet up with their online friends. Because at the end of the day, you can chat trains with whoever you like um but the passion of your online friends you, they'll share the passion you can talk to your to your husband or your wife or your children about um what interests you about trains but they sort of kind of glaze over and go that's nice but to chat to your online friends face to face bring along do a bit of show and tell if you want bring something along that you think you've modeled really well and show it off and basically it's just a space to have a a good chat with people and a coffee and a perhaps a cake. I just, I, I'm, I'm very um, disappointed. I I'm, unfortunately can't can't make it due to work commitments. But I, I, it sounded like such a great day out. Um, and as you say, I mean, it's probably one of the reasons me and Sam did the podcast, just so we can just talk trains to each other. Um, people actually, like you say, uh, have have some knowledge and actually care rather than people that go, mm, yeah. So <laughs> yeah, well, it's it's nice to sort of connect a community like that. Um, and people are already able to interact in the in the digital world, and we're able to provide a platform um that month to do it in the, the real world as well so and you never know if it was to turn into a successful day perhaps we'll do it 
you know, once, it, once yeah. a month, once every six weeks. I don't know what, whatever. We'll just, it's never been done before. Uh, it was a brainchild idea of mine that thankfully I come up with these ideas and Ian goes, yeah, just go do it. <laughs> no, all of them. <laughs> um, yeah. And I'll we'll just see it. what happens. It was, I thought it would be a good time for people to meet like-minded people and chat. Definitely. I think it sounds, I think it sounds a great idea. I think all your celebrations um, sound wonderful. Um, especially the model rail related ones. I mean, the trade one and the show at the end of the month. Um, so I'm very exciting. And yeah, so people listening, um, get yourself down to Ford, have a look around Gage Marston, as we say, make a day of it, have a little look around Arundel as well, if you're, if you're about and about. Yeah, super quickly, if you go onto our website, there's a big there's a big bit there about anniversary, so you can see exactly what we're doing and when we're doing it and the timings of it. Okay, before we go, I've got one more question. Um, what's the next model that's going to be put on the fence? Ah. None, if I had my way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I had a little brainwave one day and thought when the, that Class 73 coming, because obviously it's at O scale, I thought, how am I going to display this properly or how am I going to show this off? Uh, we didn't have any um, O-scale rail up. Um, and I thought, I know, I'm going to put it on the fence and make a video. Actually, Ian was off travelling to, I don't I think you were in Helgen or something. So I made a little video of around the fence and it's kind of become a thing now, isn't it? I was in Dortmund. I'll never forget the day. Oh. I saw arguably our best ever model. Yeah. So I believe that Class 73 is the best thing we've ever made in terms of a ready-to-run model. It's absolutely beautiful. Um, yeah, and I had, you know, had quite an interesting, gruelling meeting out there about other things and then quickly checked my Instagram to discover in my in my absence, um, yeah, my glorious brethren have decided to, <laughs> to precariously position um, our finest model on a fence. Yeah. Of course, of course <laughs> no, it's... Uh... <laughs> I think I think I think a lot of people's hearts were sort of in their throats when they saw that photo. <laughs> but yeah, and uh, it, uh, yeah, I, from the comments that we got, everyone's going, "Oh my god, how can you put something so expensive on the fence?" But at the time, I was like, "Yeah, it's a lovely day. It's all right. I'll put it on there and go around with my video." But yeah, in hindsight, I should have perhaps put something on the floor because it is a concrete floor at the side of one side of the fence. That's I should have put some cushions or something down there. I didn't know you had them. That makes it even worse. <laughs> oh yeah. One day I'm going to do, I'll get all our Helgen spares and scatter them around the bottom and take a picture and go, I tried to do an Instagram post, yeah. what happened? <laughs> and then run. <laughs> and you keep and you keep built class 73. <laughs> uh, Ian, Tracy, it's been absolutely delightful um, talking to you. Um, many happy returns for your birthday. And um, hopefully we can talk to you again in the future. Yeah, well, thanks so much for having us. Yeah, thanks for having us. It's been lovely. No problem. It's been an absolute pleasure talking to you. So, yeah, we're going to take a short break and uh, me and Sam will come back. This world we live in is a wondrous and fascinating place. We stand on the brink of greatness and a chance to make a real difference in this world. Two people who are not making a difference in the world are James and Sam. So great are their egos that you can now support them on Patreon from $5 per month to just show your support. You too can watch the model railway world burn under their narcissistic natures. Head on over Patreon dot com forward slash model rail replacement podcast and we are back for one last time of this series and that was our interview with tracy and ian from gauge master i'd like to thank them very much for coming on the show and talking to us about all their exciting plans and their birthday celebrations. Uh, just to remind you, Sam's just got a few more details just to um, keep you informed, Sam. Yeah, so obviously there's a lot going on at Gage Master, but there's two events that I personally want to tell you about. Now, if you do want to know more about the other events, you can go on to the Gage Master website or any part of Gage Master social media to find a little bit out about it. However, on the 11th, as previously stated, there is going to be a social meetup. Um, now, the idea of this, I, th I think 
it's been a little bit lost in the waves of some people thinking that it's like this weird thing where it's like a meet and greet at Comic-Con with me, Danny and Pete. And that's not what we wanted it to do. So the idea is that it's meant to be a situation where everyone can just sort of gather at Gage Master somewhere where you can sit and chat. There's trains available if you need it, but you can sort of meet up with like minded people. There is going to be a charity raffle on the day, which is something new that hasn't been announced until now. And um, there's some absolutely fantastic prizes that are going to be in there with uh, memorabilia from the, the southern locos that operated in the area um there's also a hellion 33 in the raffle so if you love a raffle anyway the fact that you could win a hellion 33 in there is pretty special and there's going to be so so many other little bits and bobs in there little trinkets that you can pick up so if you do want to come down we're going to be doing the raffle about 12 30 on the 11th um and there's lots of bits that you can pick up there as well, as well as just sit, have a chat, have a chinwag with me, Danny and Pete, and anyone else who decides to come along. Um, and they win a model rail replacement podcast coaster. Oh, there's definitely going to be... I, I was contemplating putting a set of four in there, but um, uh, apparently that then makes it feel like they're, they're, they're not as valuable. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do uh, two tickets, but cut it in half. So effectively, you need to hope that you win both halves of the coaster in there as well <laughs> also on wednesday the 14th remember that it is going to be the hellion day at gauge master now i have been very kindly invited along uh, by hellion and gauge master to do some weathering during the day so i will be doing my usual weather whilst you wait service if you do want to come along on that day and bring some stuff i am doing it a lot cheaper than i do in normal life because i'll be set up ready to go for the day um likewise if you can't make it to sunday the 11th and you want to come along and just say hi um i will be there there's lots of things you can do you can get there by rail you can get there by driving um and if you want to make a day out of it arundel is beautiful and that is just a little bit up the road from gauge masters hq so yeah so that's all the bits that involve me regarding gauge master so moving on james we've got our usual wrap up for the show for one last time this season take it away we have indeed yes um I was just having to think, though, because it's, it's the end of the show, the last season. You know, everyone likes to, you know, little reminiscing or clip shows or anything. And I was just, just sort of thinking, what's been your favourite part of the uh, podcast over the last uh, 20 weeks? So I've thrown you on the spot there. I know that. But... No, but I like the question. I really like it. Um, I'm going to come up with two answers. One of them is quite cheesy, but it is coming from a genuine place. And then the other part is actually something that has been a massive part of this entire series so the first one um sitting down and recording with james has been the highlight of my week every week for the last 19 well, 20 weeks um it has been so so fun to do this podcast and the feedback that we've had around it has been really really great as well um and whilst we're not doing this because we're expecting that we're going to be able to give up our day jobs to do it getting feedback to know that people are listening and appreciate what we say has been amazing and chatham completely cemented that because i had people who don't we get a lot of people on a monday morning who share the podcast i had people who i've never met before never heard of no social media tag to go along with it come up to me and say how much they appreciated the podcast so if you come up to me at chatham and you said that i don't think you realize how much that meant to me solely because you weren't someone i know who you were you were just someone who listens to this podcast and told us that you appreciate what we do and, what, and you really enjoy it. The funny thing is, is that I also got told quite a few times at the weekend that no one can actually really work out which one you and I are. And I found that hilarious because I always think that you're the posh one. I'm the posh one. <laughs> well, I mean, <laughs> just blowing smoke up your ass. Um, but <laughs> it, it was, it, it was. I just found it funny that they they can't tell us apart, which to me is baffling. Um, that's, yeah, that's, um, yeah, yeah. No, you you did tell me that the other day, and I did find that quite quite amusing. Because obviously, you, you're from the Portsmouth area, and I, I grew up sort of Midlands and around Bedford. So uh, I thought I thought that would be a good enough separation of accent. But I yeah. don't know, maybe maybe I've lived in Oxfordshire too long. It's, uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you live you live a little bit too far from the Salisbury curve. Um, uh, the the other thing that I've loved about the podcast has been the overarching O-Gage talk, which we, we, we have pretty much on almost every episode, O-Gage has been talked about, and it's all been talked about, oh, I, I do O-Gage and I love it, or I'd love to model O-Gage, but I don't have the space. But it always comes back to everyone wants to do something with O-Gage, me included. Like, 
I'd love to do O gauge, but I just don't have the space. But it's the fact that that has been the un the overlying, the underlying story arc throughout this entire thing, as well as me, James having to do many apologies, me offending the Steam community. O gauge has just constantly come up during this season, and I think it's been really good because I didn't realize how many other people want to do O gauge, and this season has completely shown. We just wish we had more space. Yeah. Um, I think that's pretty much it. Yeah, that's uh, definitely the most common theme. And I, I think um, my, my favourite answer was, uh, you know, when we asked all our guests what their favourite gauge was. And, and Tris, when he, he says it's O-Gage, even though he doesn't have an, an O-Gage layout, that's his favourite because he'd love to model in it. Mm. And, and, and I thought that was such a great answer because, yeah, do you know what? It probably is my favourite gauge thinking about it. Mm-hmm. I, I love watching it. I really appreciate it. And I would, you know, absolutely love to... Like I say, if I had the space, the time, and the money, an O gauge layout, um, probably Southern Steam. I think it, that's it's my biggest temptation. That's the one I seem to be drawn to the most mm. when I go out the shows. It's always looking at those bullies in O gauge, and I think, yeah, uh, I'd like one of them. What What about you? What's been your favourite moment of the the past twenty weeks? Nineteen. However, you're looking at the episode count. Uh, I'm in, I'm the same as you. Uh, it's the feedback, isn't it? The People coming to you and saying that they enjoy it. Um, you know, they, they really like listening to it. As you say, the various shout outs you get through Instagram. And it's not so much because it's an ego boost or anything like that. It's just, it's nice to know that you're not wasting your time. <laughs> yeah. It's it's a good feeling that, yeah, we, we've put all, because we do put a lot of hard work and effort into this. Um, we haven't made a single penny so far from it. Um, unless you've been doing anything by my back, but um, always. It... <laughs> but yeah, it's co- completely a labour of love, completely voluntary. Um, that quite possibly could result in it's just me and you having a chat every week, and no one's listening. And and while that's uh, you know quite the pleasure to talk to you and have a chat, it's always nice to know that some other people uh, are quite happy to ease drop in and um, get some pleasure from our conversation. So yeah, the the phrase that got uttered a lot, which I. It just it was one of those things. It made my weekend for the the reasons I wasn't there. The amount of people who said, It's my Monday morning commute, it is my Monday morning, it sorts me out for the week. And that's that's so nice to hear. So nice to hear. Yeah, definitely. That's that's yeah, that's a good thing. Yeah. When people are looking forward to the Monday morning to hear the episode. Um definitely it's uh yeah, it's a nice feeling to know. Mm. But um yeah, hopefully we will be back for a season two. And um, making people's Monday mornings again, but um, till then it's a little bit of a summer break to have. And uh, obviously, with the very slow news coming through, there's not a lot to talk about, really, is there? No, mm. um, I suppose we should just talk about the last usual things we talk about. And this is our social media shout outs. Um, do you want to go first this week, or shall I? I'll go first. Uh, so this week, uh, a nice small channel I came across recently. Um, I really appreciate the videos. Yeovil Central Model Railway. Um, uh, I've only got 510 subscribers, but it's a Yeovil base layout, a, a lot of BR blue with a little bit of a mix either side of it on there as well. Um, just fun. Like I like the whole narrating all of the trains that are running and passing through. That's that's quite nice. But if you get a chance, sit down and watch that because it is a really, really nice little channel. Yeovil Central Model Railway. Yeovil Central. I do believe I follow that one. I think it might be one I sort of recently found and yeah yeah looking at it on youtube i definitely do follow that one so yeah that's a good one to follow uh for myself i'm i'm going to give a shout out to moldy raspberry which is uh not the best model railway name out there but um as i believe he hadn't expected to sort of grow to the i think it's like twenty thousand subscribers uh about model railways but when he first put the channel together so it's sort of a, a name that stuck however um the name doesn't matter because it's all about the layouts and it's got some absolutely stunning uh, sort of Pennine-esque railways. And what I love about the videos is I believe they live near a preserved line. So they have the advantage to go out and just sort of record the trains going by and then they dub that over the top of the layout running. Mm. And um, so, yeah, it's kind of sometimes you just sat there, they're like 10, 10 minute videos of uh, you know, Black Five or something coming in with a freight and just running around and pulling a train and the nice, gentle little videos. And it's absolutely beautifully modeled and scenery. And I like the fact that he had one layout 
and then it's built like an extension. I think it's like downstairs, but because of the clever camera work, you you, you, know, you don't know that the trains have been picked up and moved from one layout to the other. It just looks like one continuous journey. It is very clever. So, uh, which is which is something I kind of want to do in the future, and maybe people out there might might want to get on board with this. But I've always thought for a very long time is um, doing cab ride footage through everyone's layouts and then just stitching it all together. So it looks like one long journey in a video, just passing through everybody's layouts, I thought might be a bit of a challenge, but I thought it might look quite cool when it's all finished. But um, yeah. If you can piece it all together, it would be lovely. Yeah, definitely. So uh, that's a thought for the future anyway. Uh, in the meantime, uh, I'll say the same to you then, Sam. How about your social media? If people want to find you, how do they find you? So the best way to get hold of me is on instagram at emperors underscore path alternatively you can find me occasionally producing videos that aren't just the podcast on youtube as well at emperors path now james if people want to get hold of you how can they do that if you want to get hold of me then you can find me on instagram as western signalman youtube as western signalman or email me at western signalman at outlook.com but don't forget that me and sam also have a joint model rail replacement podcast instagram account come find us there or if you want to email us, it's model rail RP. That's Romeo Papa at Outlook.com. Well, that's it pretty much for season one. It has been an absolute pleasure to put this together. Hopefully it's been an absolute pleasure for you to listen. Uh, we will hopefully be back with season two. Um, should be. We've got no reason why not. We've got some people lined up for interviews. Uh, so hopefully they're still on board and we can, you know, almost say... Uh, brag a little bit we think we got some big names coming hopefully and uh, yeah we'll see you all in season two so i've only got one more thing to say and that's that hopefully we've been entertaining informative and have replaced your model railway if only just for the last 20 weeks i've been james and with me has been sam well, glad that's a book. Oh, I'm gonna make you shut up over the last twenty weeks. What? What did you say? That your mic's still oh, on. That's it. Recording stop. This service terminates here. Please ensure you take all of your personal belongings with you.